can we expect it to achieve? So the, the evaluation has made dimensions, there's uncertainty, best is not defined. What we can do first is to dominate, to screen out the dominate solutions. As we can go through a process and say, of the thousand different solutions or the 10 different solutions, eight of them, for example, are good and there's a dominant three, four, five that uh, are the dominant ones. I'll give you the graph of this. And then we want to recognize that if we're talking about individuals, they must have a trade-off in some way between risk and reward is one way to think about it. And groups have to basically have to negotiate in some way a deal uh, to get things going. I mean, it, you might say that the factory owners are the bosses at rule, but as you know from, from experience, that the workers have something to say. They may not have that much power, but if they go on strike, uh, the factory owners just can't tell them everything. So there's in some ways, whether it's explicitly or implicitly, there is typically some kind of negotiation between what individuals might prefer or groups might prefer to what they actually get. So the first thing to look at is this con uh, concept of dominance. That is, if we look at two axes of benefits, uh, we will, can think of a uh, a locus of the dominant ones. There are various solutions that have have the uh, represent a an amount of one axis and one of the other one. And there are all kinds of other possible solutions interior to this space. So that this point where my arrow is right at the point of the arrow, we can agree there are solutions that are better not, on all counts. It's not that is this particular x y uh, point. There are points which have uh, the same Y but better X or the same X and better Y. And so that they are better solutions. So the ones interior are inferior and we don't want to consider them. So the first thing to do is to try to focus on the dominated, uh, to get out of the dominated uh, alternatives and look for the dominant ones, the ones that are on the uh, frontier. And, uh, I would quickly say that expected value by itself is just one measure, and we've, we've emphasized it so far, implicitly emphasized it as a meaningful way to sort of talk about distributions, but it's only one of the possible ones, and we need to go beyond that. So we other dimensions are, for example, the worst that could happen, and people are typically risk averse, don't like it, uh, and sensitive to loss so that um, they are looking at the good value on average, but maybe concerned about the downside. On the other hand, you may also be considering the upside so that uh, you know that most startups will fail. So, but the reason you're in them is because if you hit it big, it'd be life-changing. And therefore, uh, although the expected value for a startup is not positive, uh, that it may make a difference and that's why you do it. So the downside, the upside, the capital expenditure may be important. How much do I have to put in to get this? You might have some measure of benefit cost. I'm simply saying that there are many dimensions besides an expected value. One of them is, it's a very common one you should know, is this notion of value at risk and it reflects uh, it's in a standard way, the lowest 5% or 10% of, of a distribution, the tails of distribution, and is a standard concept in finance that they will often, banks and others will, will be interested in saying, well, what's the worst can happen? How probable it is that this company is going to have a big loss or this borrower is going to have a big loss is not going to be able to repay us. So they are interested not only how good it can get, that's fine, but they want to get their money back and they're concerned with what's the downside. So you would, they might want to have this figure of what's the value at risk, either at the 5% or 10% level. Uh, conversely, you can talk about the value at gain. This is not a well-established notion, but it's important. Uh, in fact, my colleagues and I have set this up as a, as a counterpart. Uh, it's sort of a, as a way of, um, balancing off the equation, so to speak. And of course, the investors are mostly interested in that. Why am I going to a startup? Well, because it might pay off really well. 
then the notion that we use a lot, and you've seen it, and you've seen it in the garage case, is this notion of a target curve, that is the distribution of outcomes. Uh, I particularly like the cumulative distribution, but some others like a frequency distribution, but it's the distribution. And it goes from the worst case to the best case, and you can sort of see, read from it, the value at risk and the value at gain. So if we looked at this, these curves, which were done uh, in, in conjunction with some studies for BP by Ji Jun Lin, when he did his PhD with us, that here at the, the cumulative probability and the benefits of this project and billions of dollars as it was, it was fun to play with that kind of money. Uh, the value at risk at 10% level was uh, a net PV of about a um, million for their, the original design, a uh, uh, million plus. For that 5% le uh, level, it was uh, a loss. And so that you can read off those um, uh, extremes fairly easily. Um, now, small question. If the target curve is always to the right of another, does it dominate? That is, um, if you have uh, this black line, uh, which represents one design, it's always to the right, that is in the po positive direction to the uh, green line, does that mean that a design of represented by the black line will always be better than a design uh, represented by the green line? Now, the obvious reaction is, well, yeah, it's always to the right, so how could it not be? The thing is that the situation that may be bad for this design, that, is, that, that occur for these low returns here, may be exactly what's good for the other one. So that although overall the distribution for the green line is inferior to that for the black line, there are cases where the bad performance and the of this design are the situation where there's a good performance for another line. You can imagine it easily that you're having a gold mine and you're digging in one direction or another, and um, it could happen that the choice that was great for one case was the bad one for the other case. So it's, it's possible, just a subtlety to alert you to.